The other day, two of us were having a conversation about bread, and things just became so confusing because I was talking about bread baked in a loaf pan, like banana or zucchini bread, and she was talking about regular white bread. Well, bread is bread, right? Well, not according to Jesus, because the bread he's offering is not baked in a pan and offers a different kind of nutrition. Now, wait a minute. Let's look at this. Those of us who bake know that zucchini bread is full of nutrition. It has lots of vitamins and minerals, and in fact, they say that there's more potassium in zucchini than in a banana, if you can believe that. Secondly, zucchini does come from God's green earth, sprouting up from really tiny seeds in only about 10 weeks after planting. Now that's that's the kind of manna we can be proud of. If we plant zucchini seeds properly, space them out over the course of the season, over the course of the year, we'll never go hungry. Though we may fight over the crops and argue about who gets to eat them and when and for what reason. But you know, it's kind of like manna. It solves the hunger problem of the day, but not much more. Jesus said to the disciple, you came looking for me not because of signs and wonder, but because you're looking for another meal. I thought about that for a moment, and I thought, how many of us only go to Jesus when we're looking for another meal? It's something to think about. I had to ask my own self, Clay, do you go to Jesus for more than a meal? Last week we talked about prayer and the importance of looking toward Jesus and including him in our plans when we need things or when we're trying to accomplish something. But this week, I'd like to turn our attention to another way of embracing this bread of life. Let's call it giving thanks. Our gospel lesson says that this bread of God which comes down from heaven gives life to the world. That's a big statement. Life to the world? When we think of life, do we think of something light and airy? or big and bold and beautiful like blue sky. Maybe we think of the sound of waves beating against the shore or the sound of children's laughter. What is life to us? Is it freedom to do what we please? Is it good health? Or is life also sickness and need? I'd like to suggest that it's all of, the all of the above, and whenever we find ourselves on this spectrum of life, wherever we find ourselves, we can give thanks to God for the manna that we are receiving. I heard a story of a young mother whose little girl was diagnosed with a terrible disease. You know, there aren't too many things in life that make us feel horrible other than when we hear about a small child with a terrible disease. The doctors told them that since there was no cure, she wouldn't live much longer. In fact, she probably would only live, if she were lucky, another two years. Such terrible, terrible news for that family. And yet, so unfair that this little four-year-old girl would never grow up to go on her high school prom, to get married or have children if she chose. Not a life in that story, is it? Or so it seems. 
But Jesus said that he came to this world to give life, and whoever believed would not hunger or first thirst for that feeling of love and acceptance and the appreciation we call life. You don't have to be an adult to understand life and to appreciate the God-given talents that we hold within. For our four-year-old little baby girl named Alexandra, with the help of her parents, set up a lemonade stand on the sidewalk of her home to collect money for cancer research in children. Do you know who I'm talking about? I think you do, because her campaign is now nationally known. It's called Alex's Lemonade Stand. And they've raised millions of dollars from the efforts of that little girl. Through that funding, many lives have been saved. Yes, there is life in sickness and need. There is much to give thanks for in this world. I know that when we turn on the television or the radio or go to the shopping mall, we see and hear some upsetting things. Just remember that in the multiple places below that beautiful blue sky, there are many positive things occurring and much for us to give thanks. So what are you thankful for this past week? Well, for me, I finally finished schools, so I got to do something that I haven't been able to do in a long time. Sit out on the patio and get lots of mosquito bites. <laughs> and I'm feeling good. A little itchy, but I'm feeling good. How about you? You know, we as Episcopalians are a little reserved speaking out, but this is an opportunity for anyone who wants to say what they're thankful for this past week. You can just go ahead and blurt it out. Everything. Anybody else? If not, I'm going to have to tell another story. Okay. Friendship. Friendship. All right, good, wonderful. I am also thankful for YouTube and Reddit. Does everybody know who, what Reddit is? I think I'm pronouncing it right. It's this little, when you go online and you want to ask a question, you can put a question out there to the forum and then people with, supposedly, expertise will answer your question. So I decided to ask a question because there's been something that's been bugging me since last Sunday, and I did tell you about it, the flies. I decided to ask a uh, question, how do you get rid of flies or gnats which hover around the chalice after you pour in the wine? I didn't know this was such a common problem. There were so many responses to my question, but this one I really enjoyed. It said that the gnats are mostly like, are most likely tiny fruit flies, which are attracted to the fruit of the low alcohol content wines used in communion. So if you want to get rid of the flies, add 190% alcohol to the wine <laughs> because they won't like the smell. As a side note, he said that 190% alcohol, or hooch, was highly flammable. And perhaps I should caution my congregants not to smoke after communion. So I'm thankful for that information. 
Though YouTube and Reddit can be informative and entertaining, there are some things in which only prayer and fasting can handle. So let's embrace Jesus every day in song, in prayer, in thanksgiving. It doesn't matter what the song is. It doesn't matter what the prayer is. Just remember to give thanks to God. Amen.